We have the new Canon R5 and R6 in our hands, as well as the new X-T4. And these all have one thing in common, and that's 4K at 60 frames per second video. That means the sharpest video. That means the highest frame rates. But the R5 also has 8K at 30 frames per second video. A lot of people are really excited about these higher resolutions so they can create really detailed video or have the freedom to crop and pan in post-processing. And the higher frame rates should produce just gorgeous, slow motion, dramatic footage. But all of these cameras overheat. We have been testing these for the last several days and it is incredibly, incredibly boring. I'm gonna to try to make this video not so boring to watch by providing you lots of the new R5 samples in the description below for both stills and video. I'm going to be showing you the difference between HD recorded on our Canon EOS RP and 8K recorded on our Canon EOS R5. I'm also going to give you my first impressions using the R5 at the end of this video, so keep watching. When you're talking about the overheating, I see three different types of responses. The most popular is people saying that they don't care about the overheating. They're like, I don't even shoot video. Why are you all going on about the overheating? Uh, the answer to that is some people care. You can just disregard those things if you don't care about the video. Some people are like, I need to know what the overheating situation is so I can plan for it. This is something I want, but is it gonna overheat in 10 minutes? Is it gonna overheat in 20 minutes? What's it like indoors? What's it like outdoors? I might need to rent some extra bodies. I might need to get some shade. This is the kind of information I want to provide you. Some people, the overheating is simply going to be a deal breaker, but you also kind of need to know exactly what circumstances it overheats in. So for these three cameras, I'm gonna tell you, if you decide to buy any of these, you can pick them up at these links. Those are our affiliate links. First, I'll go over the overheating times for the R5, the R6, and the X-T4 when recording in 4K 60 video. This is the video format that we would like to use for our YouTube channel. 60 frames per second provides us like very lifelike fluid motion. And even if you're using a smartphone, you can appreciate that smoothness when you wouldn't be able to appreciate the high resolution of 4K. We do have some percentage of our audience, about two to 3%, that watch video in high resolution, something higher than full HD, meaning uh, 2K or 4K. And those people do sometimes reach out and they say, hey, I miss when you guys recorded 4K video. So these cameras might allow us to do that if they record reliably enough and for long enough periods of time. Now, the R5 and the R6 have 30 minute recording limits. That's software based. No matter how you're recording the video, they will shut off after 30 minutes. That's because of some old European law where they throw some extra taxes on cameras that record over 30 minutes. This is a real pain to some people. In fact, that's one of the things that pushed us to switch to Panasonic back in the day because it did not have those recording limits. The other limits I'll talk about are just physics based. The cameras just generate too much heat in the processors, they cannot dissipate it, and if they were to continue to work, something would actually start to melt and the camera would permanently break. So they have little thermometers in them that say, hey, I'm getting too hot, I need to shut down before it gets dangerous. The R5 recording at 4K 60, regular quality, will record for about 34 minutes outside in 90 degree Fahrenheit weather. That's about 32 degrees Celsius. Inside, the recording time was almost exactly the same, even in an air conditioned environment. And that struck me as really odd. Why is it recording for just as long in super hot sun as it does indoors? I think the answer is ventilation. Outside, there's always a bit of a natural breeze that pushes the hot air away from the camera and helps to cool it. Inside, we didn't have fans on or anything just to improve the audio, and that meant that the air around it was a little bit stagnant. And in the case of the R5 and the R6, their particular construction meant that the ventilation offset the heat from the direct sun. These were on completely sunny days and the cameras were in full sun. As I mentioned, they had a 30 minute software based limit, so I had to monitor them closely and as soon as it shut down, I would restart the recording. The R6 could record for not quite as long. It shut off after about 30 minutes, not from software, but from overheating. So we can draw a first conclusion. If you are recording in 4K 60, the R5 will last about five minutes longer than the R6 will, so it's going to be a better choice. I recorded multiple tests for each of these values, and that made me notice that they really take a very long time to cool off. Like the first R5 test, 
lasted for like 35 minutes. I weeded two hours, I made sure it was indoors and it was completely cool to the touch. And then I recorded again and it only lasted 27 minutes. So there you can see I lost about seven minutes of recording time even after two hours of sitting indoors with the battery out, with the lens off, with the door open. This means that even if you aren't recording for a long consecutive period of time, if you're recording lots of short clips, the heat will build up and take a long time to dissipate. So there's no way that you're going to be able to get through a day of recording either indoors or outdoors without having some kind of problem. In other words, if you cumulatively plan to record 35 minutes of video with an R5, go for it. You can get it done with a single body. If that's spread out over the course of a full day, you can probably count on getting 45 minutes or an hour of footage. But if it's much more than that, then it's going to start to be iffy. We'll talk about how to improve those times in just a little bit. Talking about the Fujifilm X-T4, I covered this in my full review of the X-T4, but I wanted to retest because some viewers brought up the idea that I needed to be using SD cards from the Fuji approved list. And this seems crazy to me because SD is the standard, so cards should be interchangeable. And I don't think the camera like recognized, oh, this card's not on the approved list. I need to put more processing time into that and thus build up more heat. Anyway, the test that I did repeatedly with Sony and SanDisk Extreme Pro cards from the approved list showed that the recording times were about the same. Outdoors in full sun, it would shut off between 13 and 15 minutes, and indoors it would shut off after about 25 minutes. We can draw an interesting conclusion here. The Canon cameras recorded about the same time, both indoors and outdoors, whereas the Fuji camera recorded for a much shorter period of time outdoors. To me, this means that the Fuji camera is not as well insulated from direct sunlight. Like the direct sunlight is hitting the camera and also heating up the internal components. The Canon cameras, even though they're solid black, must be actually transferring less of that sunlight to the internal components. I should also note the X-T4 has a software base limit of 20 minutes of 4K 60 recording time. So after that time, you have to manually restart it, but indoors you should be able to get an extra five minutes after it shuts off. Because I tested both approved cards from Sony and SanDisk and unapproved cards, and I got the same results in I think more than eight tests that I did with the X-T4, I think we can all breathe a sigh of relief and know that you could use any card and not see any difference. The Canon EOS R5 in particular has recording modes that the other cameras don't, so I'll talk about those unique modes now. The first is the R5's 4K at 30 frames per second, what they call the high quality mode. This is taking full 8K 30 frames per second video and then scaling it down. And what happens when you capture four times more detail than necessary and scale it down is you get more complete color information. You get sharper overall details. I can see from here my R5 is about to overheat. Back to the R5 4K 30 high quality, where it's taking that 8K footage and smushing it down. That requires a whole bunch more math. That means it's building up more heat and the recording times are thus shorter. I got about 27 minutes over multiple takes outdoors in 90 degrees in sun, but with a nice breeze. And indoors it would shut off after about 22 minutes. And I repeated this test multiple times, so I don't know why in this particular scenario it shut off earlier indoors. I'm just presenting you the data I have, but if your intention is to use that high quality 4K 30 mode, just know that you're doing it under some sev pretty severe time limitations. I wanna take a second and remind you all that we do not accept money or free gear, no sponsorships from any camera or lens manufacturer we never have. Instead, we make our living by selling educational material to you guys, and I'm gonna take a second and give you a 50% off discount on some of our most popular video training series. The art and science of photography goes deeper than we can in YouTube because we're not required to make the videos clickbait, you know? We don't have to make them concise. We can actually teach you how to see with an artistic eye. And that's gonna do far more to improve your photography than buying a more expensive camera will. We also have our professional portrait video training series. And when I say professional, I mean, it's going to teach you how to actually make money. We do go into portrait techniques some, but the real focus of it is how to market your business, how to handle contracts, how to upsell customers. And this means you can actually make money from your camera gear instead of having it cost you money. 
Both of these have a full money back guarantee. So if you're not happy, just let me know and I'll give you your money back. But use the coupon code SUMMER50 at Northrop.photo for any of those or for our Lightroom presets and you'll get half off. For all of our other video training, like our number one photography book, Stunning Digital Photography, our video books covering Lightroom and Photoshop, or for our t-shirts, you can get 25% off with the coupon code SUMMER25. Thank you. Now let's talk about the R5 recording in 8K at 30 frames per second. My R5 now just shut off after about 15 minutes of inside recording. That's actually worse than I got in my previous test where it lasted almost 20 minutes. So you can see there is a lot of variation in there. I think that might be because now I'm recording in the basement and down here it's notorious for overheating cameras. We used to record these long like hour and a half tutorials with a Sony A9 and other Sony cameras and every single one of them would overheat in about the two hour time that it would take us to record the video. But those cameras shooting at just 4K 30 would tend to last about 45 minutes or an hour before they overheated. And so you can see that there are scenarios where people need to record for longer than 15 minutes at a time, which is what this camera just lasted. Outside in 90 degree sun, it shut off after about 17 minutes. That's averaged across multiple different takes. Now you do get about like a 30 second warning before it shuts off and then after it stops recording it will pretty much stop you from trying to immediately start recording again. It'll show zero available minutes of recording time and it will just ignore your inputs. If you wait a few minutes sometimes it will say it can record for a couple of minutes but if you're trying to record an 8k video or movie and you're not very tight and very concise, then you're going to run into problems. I wanted to tell you how long it took for the 8K RAW to overheat, but I was unable to record for more than 34 seconds. I am using the fastest CF Express Type B card that I could buy. It's rated for 1500 megabytes per second write speeds, but the R5 8K RAW requires 2600 megabytes per second write speed. So I just need a much faster card that doesn't seem to exist. I asked the guys at Canon like, hey, can you recommend a card that actually works with this? I don't even know how they've been using it internally. So I'll be able to bring you image quality results from the 8K RAW, but the overheating thing, I'm going to have to wait until I can get my hands on a faster card. Now I want to give you all some techniques for overcoming overheating cameras because you don't just have to say, oh, I'm not going to buy that camera. You can decide I want that quality and I'm willing to do some workarounds to get the results that I need. As a vlogger, we've been doing that for just years. The first is to have multiple bodies. Just buy two EOS R5s or maybe you buy three and you keep switching them out, letting one cool down while the other one shoots. You can put them in shade if you're shooting outside. Keep them out of the direct sun. You can get little umbrellas that will attach and hang out over the camera. This is especially important on the X-T4, which seems to be extremely sensitive to sunlight, whereas the two Canon cameras didn't seem to care at all about the sunlight. Circulation of air is really important. If you don't have a natural breeze, if you can get some air moving over the cameras, that will help move the hot air away and just dissipate the heat a little bit quicker. The rear screen here, flip it open instead of closing it, whether it's a tilting screen or a flip out screen. When you turn the camera off after overheating, take the lens off, take the battery out, open up the SD card hatch, anything you can do to just expose the surface of the camera as much as possible will allow you to shoot with it for longer and sooner. Once again, these are our affiliate links if you want to buy one of these cameras. And now let me give you my first impressions of the R5 because I know that's the camera most people are excited about. We're going to cover the R6 as well, but I'm kind of really impressed by the R5. First of all, the handling of it, it just feels like an SLR. If you are shooting with the 5D Mark IV, I actually think the R5 feels better. The grip feels a little bit deeper. It's a little bit lighter, but it's not too small in the hands at all. It just it handles fantastically. The thumbstick and buttons all seem to be in the right place. The buffering on it is not really a problem if you're shooting RAW to the main card and JPEG to the second card because the CF Express card is very, very fast. Even shooting wildlife at 45 megapixels, something that causes a real problem on Sony with their slower SD cards, doesn't seem to be a problem with the R5 at all. But if you start shooting RAW to both cards, then the SD card will get backed up. 
The battery life on the R5 has been fine. Canon has done something to improve the battery life on the new batteries while retaining backwards compatibility with their old batteries. But anyway, it just hasn't been a problem. The IAF is actually remarkable. I was concerned about this because the autofocus on the EOS R and EOS RP is only okay. On the R5, it's now better than Sony in my limited experience, especially when it comes to wildlife. If you're a wildlife photographer, you know, if you're shooting like a small bird in dense foliage in the woods, it can be really hard to lift up a big like seven or 800 millimeter lens and find the bird in the foliage because they're camouflaged. The R5 repeatedly found the bird and drew a box around its eye before I could. With a butterfly, it drew a box around the entire butterfly. It picked out these subjects somehow and focused on them before my eye could see them. Let me just say, it's amazing. It didn't nail autofocus every single time. It still would sometimes focus on the bill or focus on the body, but that happens with all of my SLRs and mirrorless cameras too. So maybe I had a 50% hit rate on that. That still meant that I got enough usable shots. And honestly, that's like basically what I've come to expect from like shooting at the minimum focusing distance with really, really shallow depth of field. The image quality seems to be excellent. I was concerned about how dense that anti-aliasing filter is. The anti-aliasing filter basically is there to blur the picture and reduce detail. The positive aspect of that is it eliminates moiré, which is the sort of color fringing you see around fine textures and fabrics and feathers. I still saw plenty of detail. I ran into a problem. I ordered a CF Express card for this camera, but I did not order a CF Express card reader. That's because I just planned to hook my camera up via USB-C and unload it, but that didn't work. So I couldn't get my pictures and video off of my R5. But then I remembered it had wireless transfer. So I set up my network attached storage as an FTP server, just a place where I can send files. And then I connected the R5 over five gigahertz Wi-Fi, and it, it was amazing. It worked really fast. It was transferring files at more than 400 megabits per second, which meant that it transferred them very quickly, which meant that I could transfer the files to my network attached storage or to my computer or really to anywhere if you have a little bit of IT skill without ever taking out a memory card. And that's how I'm going to move my files around from now on. Thank you, Canon, for giving us a 5 gigahertz radio and that FTP compatibility. You can also send it off to the image.canon service. We're going to do more testing around that. It will also automatically transfer still images to your FTP server as you take them. So you no longer need to use a wired tethering. You can just snap pictures and they will be on your computer. If you have a studio, that means that you can just shoot freely and your client's pictures will all be waiting on your computer, potentially with one-to-one -one previews rendered so you can immediately go through them. You could even do this wirelessly through your cell phone if you were to tether it to your cell phone from a wedding venue or wherever you happen to be shooting. Real-time high-speed wireless syncing of images is finally here and we're gonna have to dedicate a whole video to it. Unfortunately, it does not transfer videos in real time. You have to manually go in and choose to send the videos later. There's also no redundant video feature that I could find in either the R5 or the R6. It will only record video to one card at a time. It doesn't seem to ever want to record to both. If you shoot AK RAW on the R6, it will record the RAW video to the CF Express card and then a proxy MP4 file to the SD card. But that's still not exactly the same as a real redundant backup, which means on either the R5 or the R6, if one card fails, you are simply out of luck. You lost your day of shooting. That can be a deal breaker for a lot of people. Like the little X-T4 will record video to both cards. A lot of the Sony cameras will record video to both cards. It's a really weird omission on such powerful video cameras that Canon will leave that out. But maybe if we ask nicely, maybe they'll give it to us in a firmware update. Please subscribe to our channel. That's a great way to support us and to support these unbiased reviews. We are not affiliated with any camera manufacturer. We are not fanboys. We are on the side of the consumer, not on the side of the corporation. So give me your subscription, give me a like, and in the comments down below, let me know what you would like to know about the R5 and R6 in our future testing, because we're gonna take our time. We're gonna use these things in the real world, not just run it through a battery of tests. Your comments will actually shape our future reviews. I'd also like to hear what your impressions of the overheating data is. 
Is this enough to put you off from buying the camera or are you going to buy it and then buy multiple copies or are you just gonna figure out workarounds so you can get that sweet, sweet AK footage? I'm Tony Northup, thanks a lot, bye.